just like with the previous build the artistry it's a wood gazebo with an aluminum roof those are dimensions 16 by 12 well, slightly over but So step one, okay. just identify everything. Got check marks next to everything because I've gone through the list and it's a pain in the neck, but it's better to do it at the beginning in case you are missing anything. Especially if you purchased it at Costco, they're good about getting you what you need if, it, if you're missing anything. So everything is identified. This is the hardware. It's just a few pieces still laying on cardboard. Three of the four posts still in the box just to, for protection. But I've spread everything out through the back yard. It's starting on this concrete pad, which is where the previous pergola came down from. And I'll go step by step as best I can. That anchor. Got six of them now. One, two, three, four, five there. Six on the other side. They'll all be coming down. I'm gonna have to. I'll post a different video as to how I'm bringing, the, removing those. So the plan is once it is built gonna get anchored down at the four posts it gets windy here and because it's got a solid roof the wind will definitely lift it and have its way with it so I'm hoping this thing lasts me a while so I will be anchoring it down but I will not be drilling into my concrete pad until I'm done putting it together possibly without the roof just so it's a little lighter once it's in place, I can mark my holes, drill, and anchor it down that way. Step one was part identification. Make sure you have everything. I've already done that. Let's move to step two. Again, inventory parts. Step two is the post assembly. sorting out all the hardware because the instructions say I need to find a number eight wood screw however unless you're paying close attention and I wasn't at first I saw this number eight then I saw it's a pan screw but it's also a number eight just found this one that says number five but it says wood screw number eight which is a one and a half inch which is what I need for the first step so just wanted to point that out I almost used the wrong thing. I just realized that it wasn't long enough for what I needed, which was the first indicator that it was the wrong item. So, wood screw number eight, one and a half inches. So, here we go. Number two for the post assemblies. This is what is required wood parts. For each post, you will be needing the plinths, too small too large you will be needing the post mounts this is what you're going to anchor it onto the ground with two per post you're also going to be needing again wood screw number eight two and a half inch wood screw number eight one and a half inch T nuts five sixteenths black Hex bolt to go with that nut, 5 sixteenths, one and a half inch. The large washers. And the pan screws, number 10, one and a quarter inch. So as the instructions state, these mounts will attach themselves here at the base. So this is the bottom part of the post clearly these things will not go in like this so they've got to go in like this 
but that's not right. So then, like this, you're gonna align the holes with the bolts, run it through, follow the instructions, I'll continue. So I was going to start with the smaller plinths, top, bottom, but that doesn't make sense to me now given that these plates need to go in first. And if I put the smaller plinths in first, there are no pre-drilled holes. If I put those in first, it's going to create a problem later with for me, with aligning, just everything. So I'm going to start with the larger ones, meaning start with the plates and work my way around with one plate, the other plate, and then the smaller th plinths, top and bottom. Just so I can make any adjustments needed with those, given that the plates already have the pre-drilled holes, it's going to be best if I do those first. I had left this out previously. You also need the lock washer, along with the large washer. Hex bolt, lock washer, large washer. Okay, so it's not easy doing this with one hand, but here we go. Short end in. Bolt from the inside out. Align it with your hole. It's not going to come all the way out. That's what that lock washer is for. But now that you've got one end, one end, the other should go in easy. Right? Just got one, two. Lock wash goes in here. And the way this works, it's got this, these little sharp ends that as you start tightening it from the inside, they will bite into the wood. They will bite into the wood. And keep it from moving. Use a shoddy camera work. It's just me going by hand. All right, I need to go grab my toolbox. That's one. And that's two. Be right back. Alright, I'm back. Here we go. As we tighten, it sinks in, holding the nut in place. Without me having to hold anything on the outside. flush with the wood as possible so that when I attach my plinth to it, it won't be in the way. Right, so that one's in. Let's start working on the next one. And you're just going to repeat the same thing on the opposite end. And we'll come back to see how it goes with the uh, wooden pieces. Done with one side, starting in the next. Just want to remind you, bolt, lock nut, excuse me, lock washer, washer. And then on the outside, that goes on the inside, in here. On the outside, it's this part. Once you've got them both in, do not tighten them. All right, these things are still loose, still loose. The reason for that is you want to push them in as much as you can. And you need to put in these two and a quarter inch screws. One, two, three, four. Make sure the two and a quarter, two and a half. Then you want to put in these other pan screws. 
Just going to be an interesting thing to do on the inside one, two, same thing on the other side, three, four. Here we go. So, drill died. Had a fully charged battery, lasted me five minutes, which means I need a new battery and or a new drill. So, we're doing this by hand. Pan screw by hand. What I meant that it's going to be interesting is just the angle that you've got to take to get that in there. So I'm going to do all four and then move on to the next thing. I'm running out of natural light, so this might be the last video for today. Got all eight screws in. One, two, pan screws on the inside. Four. Now I can go and tighten the bolts. Off all the bolts. Before I go on, when you are screwing these, these pieces in, just make sure you pay attention to them because one side's got a rounded edge here. One side's got a square edge. The square edge, see both, both sides are rounded here. The square edge goes towards the bottom. The rounded edge, it's a decorative edge, so that goes on the top side and that goes for the long pieces as well as the short pieces okay. since I don't have an extra pair of hands and I need that held in place while I tighten it I'm using this clamp it's a ratchet clamp however I bought these a long time ago they're kind of useful but I'm gonna replace them all with the screw on type just because it's easier to control easier to adjust to exactly where you need it where these if it doesn't clamp all the way you get half a clamp you, you're kind of SOL'd and you got to keep trying and finagling with it but for now they, they work for what I need them but they will be replaced over time so I've got all four of these set up minus this last piece when I did the first one and I put that in place I did not like the gap set. We're there. All right, compared to that side. So what I did was put three of the four pieces on. Once everything's good to go, I'll see if I can make adjustments to it without ruining it. And if I can't, by ruining it is I mean cutting too short the other pieces so that this piece sits in nicely if I feel that I can't I'll just have to fill that in with something or just make do with what what it is but it seems like all four of the pieces have something similar where there's gaps again because they're mass produced that's that's just what it is so I'll leave again the last piece I'll leave that off for now and uh, once everything's up and installed I'll see what if anything I can do about it All right, we're up to step three beam assembly it seems like it's two beams All right so it's this piece and then Short in on the end, short in on the end there, and then you know the short beam here. And it seems like this other piece is just two, so you're looking at two pieces there one, two, and for this other beam, you're looking at one, two, three. So let me pull what I need and we'll go from there. Okay, this is what's needed for the next step, step three, which is sandwiching these two pieces together. Along with a bunch of wood screws that I'll point at later. Those are right there. Okay, we've got one beam, the center one there, done for the step three. And the only, the next part of step three is two of these. Where is that number there? 665. There we go, 665. Go at either end of this thing. And that long beam, it's 
called a center beam short. It's six, number 664. Okay, we got one beam, the center one there, done for the step three. And the only, the next part of step three is two of these. Where is that number there? 665. There we go, 665. Go at either end of this thing. And that long beam, it's called a center beam short, it's six, number 664. A couple things here with step three. Make sure that your joints are as tight as you can get them, just to avoid any gaps and just to make it look nice. And secondly, make sure that you follow the instructions as to what end or what side the head of the bolt needs to end up on because for the next step you're going to sandwich these two together and if you put the heads on the wrong side meaning the inside here it's not going to sandwich together you're going to have to undo it and then you know flip the bolts around and put it on the correct side so as of now, all I've got are the, these flat pieces on the inside of both pieces. We're gonna join them together in a second. And these two ends here, where is this thing? In there, so, all right, are going to have to align this side with that side. All right, so I made a mistake. And on these short beams, when I'm attaching them both, I used four bolts on each beam. However, you're only supposed to attach the top ones because the bottom ones, you attach the cross beam to it later. Uh, that's my fault for not reading the instructions correctly. So what I'm doing is I remove the bolts, and just untighten them, loosen them, pull them out. And I'm using one of these longer screws that came with it to pop it through the hole. Yeah, sorry for the camera work. Here we go. All right, same hole. And then just push. Pops out. Just did that for all, doing that for all four of them and uh, continuing on. Finishing up step three, which is a short beam assembly. Whatever the instructions say, you just got to do it twice because there's two short beams. Moving on to step four, which is a long beam assembly. Long beam assembly seems to be more or less the same as a short beam in that you've got two pieces attached at the center and three pieces attached at the ends. They're just longer pieces. get it started we're looking for 649 and 650. Remember step four you're gonna repeat twice because they're just two long beams. Now as I'm looking at the instructions here for the uh, outer end even though there are three slots three holes for the bolts we're only using the top and the bottom we're leaving the middle one unused for now I'm assuming something attaches to it later the same goes for the inside beam in that it's going to have spots for three. However, we're just using the center one when we get to that. Okay. Second part of the long beam assembly includes this long beam insert, which is just a thin metal piece that stretches across and it sits in the center sandwiched between the two beams and this is it here it comes wrapped in plastic so there's two of them one for each long beam so i'm just going to rip off the plastic line up the holes get it screwed into place and we'll go from there so we line up the holes this metal piece all the holes get lined up 
so that when you sandwich it together, the bolts and screws that need to go through can get through. We use these number seven wood screws, and it's 10 of them per long beam, so 10 and 10, 20 total. So they go one, two, three, four, five, and another five on that side to hold it in place so that when you sandwich it, it stays in place. Okay, as it happens, as I'm going through this, I've made a mistake. This bolt here needs to be in the middle. So I can't proceed. So does that one over there, center. I can't go on to the next step because the next step requires the two bolts I go through here, one, two, to come out on this side. So in order to fix this, I need to remove the screws I just put in for this plate. Put in that bolt in the middle on both ends, slap this plate back on, tighten everything back up and then move on to the next step. Move the bolt, lining up these holes, running a bolt through it, we should be good to go. Okay, as I'm going through putting in these bolts, it's a tight squeeze, so I'm using the clamps to kind of squeeze things together. Once you run the bolt through the hole with the washer and the lock, that it doesn't always automatically latch on right away so the clamps are there for that reason another thing you can do is once you've got uh, this part in just gently hammer it in a little bit and when you do the bolt will grab it when once you start tightening it's good to go no more worries after that Those bolts are in nice and tight now. Time for these wood screws. The good thing is that there's already pre-drilled pre holes for all this stuff so you know where it goes. And again, this is the long beam assembly. Once I put in these screws, if I'm not mistaken, I'm done with one of the two. So now I'll just repeat the whole process again. Preferably without the mistakes. And then we'll move on to the next one. Now that we've got our long beams done, our two short beams done, it's time to attach them to the posts. So that's step five, part one. All we're gonna need is long bolts large washers and they're different than the washers we've been using so far and a lock nut be careful as far as what lock nut you use use the correct one there's a one quarter inch and a three eighths inch we're using the three eighths inch for the most part it's usually just me doing these projects so I count my ladder to help me hold things up when necessary so rested the cross beam up on top on the top rung there I used a paint tarp just so it doesn't get dinged up the wooden cross beam because the wood's a little soft put in the bolt through right it goes through this center hole into that already pre-drilled hole comes out on this side and just loosely tightened it so it doesn't slip out. Adjusted this other corner post to where I think it's more or less the right location. I think it's still a little off. So I'll make the adjustments later to left or right and then put that next bolt in and move on to the next step. One down. It's fairly stable on its own. So I'm comfortable removing my ladder because I'm going to need it when I put together the other one. 
So two to go. Again, I didn't mention it before, but it's just the one bolt, one lock nut, two washers. One washer for the inside, one washer for the outside. So we've got two short ends down. Now, moving on to step five, which is the gussets. Track them down, pull out the hardware, and we'll go from there. Okay, about to start on the gussets. So, tinker with them. One will fit correctly, one won't. Um, and that's mainly because they go on opposite ends. The ones that fit correctly. Shoot, it's not even this one. Here we go. These two holes will line up perfectly up there. Like so. There we go, like that. And this other end will be flush up. The cutout will be flush up against this end here. And the same goes for the opposite end. Then you run your screws or your bolts through them. The T nut on the opposite end to hold it in place. And then you can come back around like it says here with a lag screw on the outside. And here we are with the T nuts loose. All right. So then this side here flush then your hex bolt goes in there the bottom one here excuse me not the hex bolt it's a lag screw right and this bad boy here once you tighten the top it's just you're essentially drilling your hole with the with the lag screw and that's it and then just repeat it four times on each corner before moving. Time for the long assembly. For the long assembly, all we need is bolts, long bolts, washer, lock nut, and a long assembly beam, or a long beam assembly, times two. All right, so it's eight of those hex bolts, and it's gonna be two per corner, two, four, six, eight. So now it's just a matter of moving my short beam assemblies into position, more or less where I'm going to end up needing them or wanting them. And then going from there as far as measuring for the long assemblies and again using my ladder to help hold it up while I bolt it in place. I will say this. This whole process is easier with two people, but I guess I just like making things harder on myself. So this long beam here, I've got it sitting on the ladder. I'm gonna use my small ladder, step ladder, to go put the bolt in on the other side. The instructions say it requires two bolts up there, one on the top, which is already in, and one on the bottom. However, because it's at an angle sitting on the ladder, um, what I'm going to do, which is I've already done, is put in the one bolt on top. That'll give me some play with it, you know, if I need to go up or down. So when I get to the other side, it won't be an issue as far as whether I lift it or lower it to make sure the holes line up over there. You know, once I put my two bolts over there, I'll come back, put in the second bolt here and tighten everything before I go and do it again on the other end. All right, we've got this almost complete everything is up just need to add these parts here to this side part over here, here there there and there before we can move on to the next stop all right it's dark now i've already put in all two four six Eight of the corners now it's everything's tight now it's a matter of putting in some lag bolts you need three per corner 
one in the center there and two on the opposite uh, side of the post corner post there before moving on and I'm sure the next step is going to be this lag bolt there lag bolt there just make sure you use the appropriate sizes there's some that are longer than the others all right so you go one two one and it'll look like this it'll look like you've got three on each end three bolts there three bolts there on the inside you'll just see the one on either side excuse me one on one side two on the other and then you just repeat that for all four corners and you move on as i stated before in a previous project my wife is not fond of the color of the roofs the rest of the uh, gazebo we really like is just the color so as before we're going with high heat rust-oleum high heat the reason for it is because it's a roof it does get really hot this thing would resist up to uh, 1200 degrees I've used it before on my grill and it's lasted me for years just spray paint spraying over this right this is the end cap to the new roof right so in the previous project is that bad boy there and that's black same spray paint it's been I don't know six months or so and I haven't had any issues with the paint that's the exterior this is the original color so the difference with this new gazebo is that I'm painting both the interior and the exterior of the roof black flat black with this paint the roof comes with a plastic sheathing. I'm assuming it's to protect it from scratches or whatnot in shipping. So I'm gonna have to peel that off on both ends. Give it a wipe down in case it's got any oil or anything else on it. And then just give it one or two coats with this paint. And it'll go from looking like this looking like this I've already given this one coat sitting out here in the elements so it's a little dusty now but that's it that's what it's gonna end up looking like and after doing it to the first project I kind of like it and I'm glad we're doing it to both the underside and the top side of the roof it'll be nicer you got the before here's the after so now it's just a matter of doing this with every panel <laughs> Both front side, well, I guess it's underside and top side. I need to wait for it to dry before I can get to the underside. But that's what that looks like for now. It's still drying. Step six, it looks like we're gonna start working on the roof assembly. Here we go. This is pretty self-explanatory. Line up the angle. Make sure when you're reading this, you see where your cuts are and how the bolt goes in. For example, I've got mine reversed in comparison to the image because my cuts on the edge here are in the other direction, which means I'll flip my image around so that I know Okay, the bolt comes in through this side, out through the other side. So it'll be bolt, washer, and then T-nut on the opposite end. T-nut. Bolt and washer. and then tighten and we're going to do this two times 
So we need two number 627s and two number 628s to make two pieces. So we've come up with where we want this thing to sit. It's going to be six inches in on both sides and then on this side it's going to be equidistance between the concrete tabletop and this post and the same on the other side which is roughly about two and a quarter inches more or less so it's not going to be centered with the slab it's going to be centered with the barbecue island I've got another project going at the same time I'm hoping these two things will do the trick as far as anchoring this thing goes so we centered it with the rocks on the bottom on either side. Now I'm going to just drill one hole, anchor it in one corner so that I can maneuver the other side left to right while maintaining my distances here. And the reason why I'm maneuvering that side, moving it left to right is to make it equidistance from that edge there so that it's square with the concrete as opposed to at an angle which is what it currently is. So I'm using these two and a quarter inch anchors with that drill bit here and as per the instructions I need to drill the hole a quarter inch deeper than the size of the anchor. So by that I'm going two and a half inches from the tip to that point there using this as a little flag so that I know how far I've gone our first hole is done I was pleasantly surprised how easy it was with the new drill my old drill would not have been able to make that hole as easily as this one if at all so as far as this DeWalt, I would recommend it, but that's not what we're here for. Um, put in the anchor, hammer it into place. It's a tight fit, which makes sense. So I'm going to hammer it into place. The reason why I'm only using one at the moment, again, is because that's going to be my base and from there I'm going to pivot everything and align everything from there then I'll remove it through my other holes and get that squared away the bolt is in just gonna loosely tighten it again to keep it in place to keep this post in place while I square off and adjust the other corners without having to worry that the rest of this thing it's going to be out of alignment. So the drill did great. As of now, I've got one anchor down on each corner. While we do get some wind here, I'm not sure if I'm going to do all four anchors because I'm leaning towards two in each corner. We don't get too much wind, but it does get windy enough where I would need at the minimum two anchors in each corner. So that's what I'm leaning towards. So we'll go from there. Moving on to step seven. I already got the long beam down, which is step six. So I need to find the rest of the pieces and assemble my two triangles. Got them all screwed in, except for the last four screws. Just wanted to show you this. The bottom crossbeam comes in two pieces. One long one that goes across 
one, two, three, four and a half. And one short one that covers just that part there. Now it seems with these cross beams being screwed in, a lot of this stuff is kind of straightening out. I had to use a little help there to pull pieces together in one direction or another as I move down. But it seems like it's coming along just fine. So once I'm done with these four screws, I'm gonna need to screw there, two there, two there, and two there. All right, so here we go. I've attached these long beams that go up and down. The ones that span across left to right are not screwed in yet. And unfortunately, I've waited way too long. It's been a few weeks now with these wood pieces out in the sun, and some of them have, war have warped. So they're not lining up quite the way they should be. So I'm gonna try to bend them into place as best I could and go from there. So this is pretty straightforward. This piece here screws in through here, one screw straight through into this piece here, this long piece. And it goes flush on the edge here, as flush as you can get it. The same thing with the bottom. One screw straight up all the way across each one of the bottom pieces has one screw. Now, these here are not screwed in at the top yet. That comes into play later. So it's just four that are not screwed in on top. One, two, the center piece is already screwed in up there. Three, four that are not screwed in on top. So these cross pieces go in first as far as screws go. And once those are in place, you put in one, two, three, four, eight screws, two on each piece up on top. Working on the second one. I will say this for this project. I normally do these and it takes me a few weeks just because I've got other commitments. On something like this, I wish I had the time to get it all done in one shot because some of this wood that's been sitting out and it's been laid flat but because of when it arrived it was still kind of wet some of it has twisted and turned which leaves me with things like this that I need to figure out a solution for I'm gonna run a couple different screws from the top in that have that didn't come with this kit just to make sure that this seals shut and it doesn't create any problems later and that is because this long board, this long two by here, yeah, am I pointing at the right place yet? Yeah, here, has twisted somewhere along the middle where it's no longer flat. And the bottom thing is kind of angled, the bottom portion of it is angling away from where I need it to be. But that's on me. Uh, had I done it right away while everything was still wet, it would have fit in perfectly and it would not have warped out of place. That's just something to take into consideration when you're doing this. So the instructions say put in all the screws along the edges first before you move to the inside. So I just hand tighten them just the tips in everywhere the instructions say for now. Once those are in tight, then we'll start aligning the insides. I've already mentioned this one before, but once before, but it's worth mentioning again. I'm using those to align the boards that are going up and down so they can line up with the grooves that have already been cut out, notched out. Because I, as I said it earlier, some of this stuff has warped. Um, again, not significantly, but enough to where things aren't lining up correctly. But it seems to be working. So we're done with step seven, we're moving on to step eight. Step eight is just attaching 
two pieces to each of the small roof assembly to the bottom part. So the instructions say to flip it over, meaning from when you first assembled it, where it's flat along this edge here. The instructions say to flip it over so that this other side here that's got the gap in it between the edge and the beams going up and down and that one piece goes along that edge there so here's step eight it's these two pieces here All right this is one that's the other tight in the center tied against this bottom board flush against the edge They've already pre-drilled pre the holes. Just grab your pan screws required for this and then go to town. When you're putting in these pan screws, do them one at a time. I started at the edge, moved on to the second one. The wood may not be completely straight, so if you do them one at a time and start at one end and work your way to the other, you can use one hand to hold the wood down while you use the other one to screw things in. Another thing is don't over tighten because you will break this. It's really thin. Just finishing up the paint. Been through quite a few spray cans. I will recommend this um, if you're building this. Make sure you take the plastic. All of these panels come covered in plastic. Right. I pulled the plastic off most of them. Um, I did leave two in the sun and the plastic baked on. So I have no idea as of right now how I'm going to get this off. So you see this here. Plastic on the left. Just straight panel on the right. Uh, so I need to figure this out. It peels off if you leave it in the sun for too long. Which is a plus. However, I do need to get these things painted and mounted. So there's... I don't have time to just leave them out baking for a couple of weeks. I need to finish this project. When attaching the panels, see like this one needs a little more paint, but that's on me. When attaching the panels, make sure that the, the smaller sections, that these cross beams are on top, because that's what you're gonna end up screwing it onto. The instructions aren't too clear. It took me a second to figure it out. Just thought I'd let you know. Again, make sure that these beams are on top because the screws are going to have to attach to something. And if that wooden piece is upside down or reversed, the bolts or screws that go on, go in these holes here, won't have anything to attach to. So just putting these screws, you're supposed to leave the last row without any screws in it yet. And for me, at least, they are the same color as the original roof. So as I go, I'm going to paint them all black. Just get one of the spritz of black paint. Otherwise, you're going to stick out like sore thumbs. So these are the two small roof panels with the shingles on them or the roofing panels on them. I know the paint is off colors in different spots but it's been my experience and I hope it's the same here that that'll even out with time I've got another project that I did in the past where it was the same thing but just over time it all just evened out I guess with the Sun beating on it it evened it out so we're gonna move on to the next step so step 10 is the ridge clips for the small roof assembly which is still what we're working on And if I'm not mistaken, those are my ridge clips there that still need to be painted black. So before I attach anything, I'll be painting those black as well. Still more painting. These edges here. If you're not painting it, it shouldn't be an issue, but they're all labeled. Um, and the one that I just painted, or the uh, roof edge, the right side. So this is the left side that I'm going to be painting next. 
So just make sure you don't mix up your labels. It's not that hard to sort out, but you, you can avoid the confusion. Moving on to step number 11, starting to whip, uh, put together the large wolf assemblies. I've got the smaller ones done, uh, they look dirty with, because of the rain, but those are for the smaller sides, uh, left and right, one there and one there. So now I'm building the two that go across on this side and on that side. Step 12, we've got the long beam down, so now we're just going to add one, two, three, five more to make that box there before we move on. Got everything sorted out and ready to go, so now it's just time to start adding the pieces. Started on step 12, which is adding to the large roof assembly that we have already built, which is Long beam in those four pieces along with that top piece. So we're just adding one, two, three, four, five, six, all the great parts. So I laid it out. That's what I'm working on, and I'm pulling while I'm grabbing those, I'm setting aside all the pieces I need for the other side or for when I duplicate it. Um, as, as I stated before. This has been out in the sun for a while, so some of these pieces have warped. I'm not sure if you can tell, but that bottom piece there kind of curves in towards me. So as I'm screwing things in, I need to make adjustments to make sure that they're as straight as I can get them without breaking anything. So everything is bolted in, or screwed in, I should say, except for the tops. Uh, these two tops and those two tops everything else is screwed in Those don't get screwed in till later once the cross beams are put in So now we're moving on to the next step which is these two spacers up on top Which is step 12 part 3 So here we are at this black X bolt here it does not stay there it's just to help you align this thing and put it in the correct spot so once you put these two screws one and two this hex bolt comes out and you're good to go to the next step which is the other spacer using the same hex bolt in that center hole to align it in the correct spot so on to step 12, part 4, which is going to be the straps that go across. Looks to be like this is just going to be the 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. Okay. Any correction, looks like the middle one is going to be 2 pieces. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces. Similar to the small roof assembly where the bottom strap had a separate piece here. This seems to be just looking at the instructions. Like there's going to be five pieces. One of these is going to be split in two. Reading this here. The mid strap left side, mid strap right side. So here we go. Time to go find these pieces. All right. Upon further inspection, the only piece that's going to be complete it's going to be the top one, so the middle the middle piece is going to be split in two, as will be the bottom piece here. So I'll, make, I'll figure out where they go right now, just put them in place, and then we'll start screwing things in. Okay, got everything aligned. 
just like with the other short roof assemblies these don't overlap they get screwed in side by side so that's one joint there this is the other joint here and this is the reason why you don't want to screw the tops just yet because when these go in you will have to make adjustments up here to make sure that everything falls in place I might have to get my clamps back out here because I used them for the shoe small roof assembly but we'll see how this goes all of those screws are in now it's just time to for the final step one two three four I need to screw those four pieces in and that'll be done with this part so I'm building the second one right above the first one and as one would expect it's going a lot quicker This is where we're at. Just need to put the cross beams next, screw everything down, and we'll go from there. So here we are, both are done. If you notice, only one of them has the additional blocks. That's by design. <clears throat> the next step requires me to flip them over. Um, so I'll figure that out in a minute because I'm out of room back here. I'll probably do them the same way they are now, just offset them. So I'll flip them over, and then we need to attach a piece in the center for support. I'm assuming, there we go, in the center. <laughs> in the center for support. Um, uh, I'm assuming it's so those uh, where those bolts went in, both the top and the bottom, for support there so that doesn't bend or give in any way. So we need to attach a block there, and then there's a couple of pieces, just like with the small roof assemblies that run across from one edge to the center, and from the center to the other edge. So it'd be one, two pieces on one, two pieces on the other. Well, this is the block that needs to go in, and again, it goes in the center. And all I can think of is that it's just to add support to this joint here. As per the instructions, this thing needs to go either level with these two pieces here. There's a gap just again. Uh, things have twisted, but it goes level there or below, not over because the next long piece is going to sit on top of this. So if you put this too high, it's going to be in the way when you put in your next piece. Okay, I'm done with one of the two large roof assemblies. So I'm gonna move to the next step with this one. And the next step is to attach the roof beam brackets. So it's gonna be two of them on the center two post. It includes a couple of these bolts. And just like with everything else, I painted these from the previous color to this black so it all matches. All of this hardware was painted black so it all matches. So both of these are in and you're supposed to leave them loose. I haven't read further on but it makes sense to leave them loose so that when this gets sat up on top of that it won't be an issue as far as them being too, too tight and you having no flexibility to make adjustments once it's sitting on the top. Just need to start bolting this down once I get it lined up where I want it. I've got 4 by 4s underneath just so that there's no pressure on the two, I forget the exact name of them, but these two brackets got two of them on this one as well so I want them off the ground so I've got just one four by four there one there one there and one in the center just for support to keep it off the ground just to not cause any damage to it once everything is bolted down except for the last row we move on to step 15 which is the edging 
and the, the bottom edging is the reason why you do not bolt any or screw anything down here is because you can use those screws to hold down the roofing and the edging. So I've already installed this edging here. If this is like the other smaller shingles, excuse me, fall, smaller roof panels. Next edging is here and there, and that's gonna require um, some of this weather stripping, which has self-adhesive self on one end and it attaches on the inside of that before it gets screwed up. Adding this weather stripping. After reviewing the instructions for like a millionth time, I'm realizing that the weather stripping tapes on to the side with the screws so that when you screw it against the side, the weather stripping in theory is supposed to get pushed in and cause a good seal. Moving to step 17, which is the peak cap assembly, before moving on to step 18, which is attaching the large assembly to the front, the frame. And this is gonna be interesting, but we'll see if we can make it work with one person, considering the instructions say bring five people. We'll see. Let's start here. I might actually have to bring more people, but we'll play by ear. I've got one of the panels in the center. The plan is to get up on the ladder, slide it into place, and then just have the short end rest on the ladder. Well, I use my flimsy ladder on the outside to bring the other panel, which is down there, and then have them just meet in the middle and the pressure of both panels is going to hold it in place in the center and then as per the instructions each one of these panels has these clips that will eventually get screwed onto there you know and it's not just the two clips each one of these beams has a hole for those clips but initially it's just the two clips per panel Wish me luck. Hopefully I can do this by myself. So here we are, out of breath, by myself. Whoo! Holding this damn thing with one hand just to shoot this. But it's up there. Those two hooks are gonna hold it in place. Those two hooks are gonna hold it in place. The ladder I'm standing up is gonna hold it up. Then I'm gonna see what I can do with the other side. So this is where we're at. Need to slide that corner back and get in the center of it and try to slide everything over to my right. One side's up. I just got the other side up. Just need to adjust it towards me and then the plan is to come into the center and lift them both up having them slide on to the brackets before bolting things in all right so I'm under this bad boy clips are holding it in place over here as well but I'm realizing that when I put this SOB together this board in here needs to be flipped around so now I'm gonna see if I can do it while everything is still up here but that might be a complete pain in the ass and it may not I may not be able to do it because it requires removing that in there and that in there so I may just have to leave it as is because not only do I need to remove that long piece which clearly is attached to everything else I gotta unscrew here unscrew here 
And the reason I would need to remove this long piece is because there are screws coming in this way. Same thing over there. Oh, Jesus. And then I would need to undo the screws that are holding the tin in place on top. So let me see if I can just make it work this way. If not, I'll have to figure something else out. What? So there we go. Unfortunately, that gap is going to remain. I don't like it at all, but I've got no choice. In order to fix it, I need to bring everything down. And that's not happening. Not only do I need to bring everything down, I would need to remove the screws on that corner there. There. On both sides, remove all the screws on top that are holding the uh, roof shingles in place. Um, flip that bad boy around. It seems like it'd be easier, but I can't just remove the one screw for that end piece. I would need to take all of them off. That one, that one, that one. So that I don't damage that piece there and I would need to do that to both sides. So it seems to be holding in place as it is. I may just end up with a gap up there. Uh, but you know, once uh, everything gets tightened, we'll see what it looks like. So those two bolts up there are loose. Just to give you some flexibility, we'll have to tighten them later. As I'm installing these, which is the next step, we started with two. The next step requires that we install two more on either side for four total. I find that I'm having to make adjustments to the roof by having to push it up towards the center in order to get these brackets to line up flush against this board. But as I'm adjusting for the end, these other ones are getting farther from where they're supposed to be. However, when you do line up these two center ones, I do recommend you tighten them just to try to keep them in place. So when you do have to move one of the corner ones, this thing isn't flopping around and it'll hold its place as best as you can have it hold its place. So you can make your adjustments on the other sides. This next step is fairly simple. You just take the uh, top cover, or slide it into place. It really just sits on top, it's loose. And once you get down here, these plastic pieces, you put your nut in there and then use the plastic piece to tighten it. All right. Okay, next step is a small roof assembly. It shouldn't be much easier for me than the large ones. So essentially slide it up move the cap there. What's going to be interesting for me is going to be the second roof assembly. I may need help for that, but we'll see. Right, slide it in, pop that up, and Bob's your uncle. Time to put up the small roof assembly. The instructions don't call for this. <clears throat> I hope I'm not making a mistake, but I popped this bad boy in here. Uh, simply because it helped with the large roof assemblies keep them in place so that they didn't slide down and off on me again I'm doing this by myself So the train of thought here is putting that in will help Keep it in place once I slide it up so that I don't have any issues with it sliding off on me Let's hope that works First small roof assembly I'm up on top. I've already raised that up so it's not in the way. Hopefully I won't run into any problems there. I should probably remove it, but let's see. The plan is to lift it, bring it over, slide it over my head, pop it in there, slide it into place. Wish me luck. A little bit of a struggle to get it up, but it's up. And to me, putting that clip in there was a great idea because otherwise this thing would be sliding around all over the place. 
it's up, but it still needs adjustment. So I need to get on the outside of this and adjust to close that gap and figure out this side. It took a lot of uh, adjusting and I'm not completely there yet, but I've got two of the bolts in that will attach the short panel with both longer panels. As you can see, there's a gap still here. There's a larger gap on the other side. What I did to help myself out, I removed the two four screws on this side that were holding the large panel onto that beam because I still needed some adjusting. Um, because I left everything out in the sun for so long, some of these pieces of wood were, were warped, a little twisted, so it left me with gaps on the edges like that. So removing those two screws it's going to allow me to move the large panel closer to the smaller panel and just make those adjustments. When I get to the other side, I will more than likely have to also remove those four screws so that I can slide the larger panel up and down, excuse me, left and right. There's also adjusting that needs to be done upwards at that point where the small panel meets the two larger panels just to make sure everything lines straight enough to put the bolts in. Uh, I found that using clamps is helping me out tremendously. Just tighten things in place. Again, it's just me doing this, even though the instructions say use multiple people. These are some of the gaps that are left with the wood warping. It seems to me like the piece on the left it's turned where are we at here? It's turned inward. Kind of like that. Away from the other piece. So I'll have to try to figure something out with that later. Whether it's adding an extra bolt inside somewhere or maybe just leaving it be because I don't want to break it. I don't know. Got all four panels on. The only ones bolted together. Are these three one large panel one small panel one large panel just pop this small panel into place need to make the adjustments then bolt it together to the other two large panels then I'll come back down and put these screws back into place the two that I took out of here are out of alignment, so I might just have to make new holes if I can't realign them. These on this side still seem to be aligned, meaning I can see the holes that I drilled into the wood through the holes on the actual metal. So let's try to adjust that and see where that leads us. When I put this on, I use that uh, clip to keep it from sliding off. So let's see where this goes. So here we are, tightening the last six or so bolts. And it's important to try to get these gaps as tight as you can. There we go. The bottom one is tight. It's working on these two here. And then the last three on that side. One, two, three before going around and making adjustments down there to tighten all that stuff up. And we're almost to the end. The next step requires me to put those screws, little wood screws, on the outside corners. There's already pre-drilled holes there, but it's on these outside corners there and there to seal them tight. However, I'm finding that because these braces on the inside aren't screwed in yet or flush, when you screw them in, they go flush and it makes an adjustment where everything kind of slides up. I'm finding that because those aren't in yet, it's leaving me big gaps between these, which is making it difficult for me to put those screws in there tightly and securely. 
and without fear that I'm going to damage the outside wood, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to forego that step, put all of these in tight, and then go back to that step. So when you put these in, right, I know I had two in previously, but they weren't completely in the right way. Make sure when you put these in, you screw the top one in first, because what that will do is this is too tight for me to show you but there's a gap there it'll close up this gap and it'll give you the better position to put these two screws in so put this in first in my case because i was using these as braces so that the roof doesn't move on me the panels don't move on me well what i'm gonna have to do is loosen this up put this screw in tighten this bolt and then put these screws in or vice versa put this in so that it's flush against this top beam put in these two screws and then tighten this up and I'll have to do that for all of them so it'll be one two step two and then step three tighten that up all the way around got all my screws in All the way around again I found that once the bolts are in leave them loose leave the bolt loose it's a bad example because I scratch the hell out of that paint there so leave this bolt loose tighten this screw as you tighten this screw what's gonna happen is it's going to pull everything down tight because just of where the bolt is placement wise. Um, then I did these two screws and then tightened the bolt. It did help me out with the corners as I anticipated, not by much, but enough for those screws to go in. So I've got one corner here. The bad thing is I can see the damn screws from the side. However, this little plate here, which is one of the next steps, goes in that corner and it covers covers it up it's just and I doubt it's just me and leaving it out at this point I think it's more of a the way this thing is designed but it can be either it could be both it could be neither but given that they give you the plates to cover things up I think maybe these things are cut short just so they all fit all right, I'll carry on. These are the screws that hold this cap in place. I'm going to need four per corner. I'm going to need to come around and paint them afterwards. I don't want to paint them ahead of time because I know I will probably just scratch them up. Ridge caps. Here we go. So we're going to go with the I don't know if to call that a triangle. That angled piece is going to go in first. The flat piece is going to go, is where we're going to push that in. And in theory, this thing is going to slide up those grooves. All right, through those grooves and up and under that cut cap on top. So here we are, I've already slid in the long pieces as high as I could. In order to get them in place, you need to lift the center cap up so that the long pieces slide under. And then the smaller pieces of this ridge cap. slides into that groove there and put that in the same way you slid the rest in right and then you push it all the way to your the edge wherever you're comfortable with because it doesn't give you specifics then you're going to add one screw there one screw there 
to each of the pieces. I've not screwed any in yet because I just want to make sure that everything was set with the assembly up on top. Now I'm going to bring that assembly down, put in my screws, and move on to the next step. We're almost done. So here we are on top. My two sheet screws. Sheet metal screws, one there and one there. Now repeat the process for all four corners and you're done. Before I move on, since I already have the ladder here, bring my spray paint and touch that up so the entire roof is the same color. Done with step 23, screws are in and painted over. Moving on to step 24, which is securing the roof peak. In order to do that, we're gonna have to remove the peak loop on both corners, one at a time. Attach these to, uh, what the hell are they called here? roof peak brackets they're gonna overlap and then each one is gonna secure to those two uh, seams there on one side and then the other two seams on the other side where the small panel and the large panels meet so there we go nut is in hand tightened because it's plastic you don't want to over tighten that you might break it these are in they're just going to require a couple screws two there two there so time to do the same thing on this side and put those screws in and we're done okay so these are in again just gonna have to come by and touch this up later i'll see if i can deal with the brush just to avoid spray painting the Got all four braces on. Tie wrap brackets is what they're called. Just need to do the uh, the screws. Two on that side and then two on the opposite side, meaning the other way. Um, experimenting with this, I came to the realization to get the measurement right after I got the first one in. When you're putting these on, it helped for me to have three ladders if I'm doing this by myself, which I was. Help would be good because then you can have one person holding one end while you screw in the other end. When I got to the last one by myself, I found that it was easier to put in one of the top screws, one of those two up there, than the bottom one because there's a short screw there's a short screw on the left and a long screw on the right the long screw ties in the long piece with the roof so I did one of the oh well, yeah I did one of the top ones the long one up and then the other top one spider-man my way <laughs> across the ladders from here to there to there with my drill in hand while holding the two by before putting in this long screw that goes up. Um, as a setup, as I had them laid out on the floor, this piece here, this is a short screw, this is a long screw. I put this in first because this just ties the bracket onto the two by with this longer two and a half inch screw, ties in the whole piece to the roof. I had a little problem with the other ones because again, I was trying to figure this out on my own. But I've got everything in. Um, now it's just a matter of putting in those screws. One more step as far as items to attach. Then we're good. Then it's just follow up. We'll touch up it on all the shiny screws to make them matte black, flat black, just like everything else. As well as touch up in areas like this where I clearly scratch the hell out of that. We added curtains, but more than that, I wanted to 
recorded a little bit of this. When the sun comes up and the roof starts getting hot, and when the sun goes down and the roof starts cooling off, it does that. So, sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispies where it just crackles and pops and crackles and pops. I think it's just the roof expanding and contracting because I have no other idea what it could be. <laughs> 